In this episode of Mind Pump, we wanted to get positive. We wanted to inspire and motivate all of you right now who are stuck at home, not able to go to the gym because of uh, what's going on. You know, we know our role in the fitness space is to help people get fit and healthy and take care of themselves. And we've never been negative people. We know it's much more effective to be positive. So in this episode, we tell you what you can do. You've already been hearing in the news what you can't do and what you shouldn't do. So you've already got that down. But here's what you can do at home to improve your health and wellness. So we covered three of the most important things. We talk about at-home workouts. So just because you can't go to the gym doesn't mean you can't take care of your fitness. In fact, a lot of you will actually become more fit because you can do things at home that you might have been neglecting because you've been going to the gym. We also talk about how to feed your body. We talk about the value of feeding your physical body properly. That means having the right amount of proteins, fats, and carbs, and the right foods, but also how to feed your emotional body. Believe it or not, there is a role in comfort eating, especially right now, and we talk about how to manage that. And then finally, the most important thing, managing stress. We talk about real, effective, proven ways to help you manage your stress and how to implement them in your life. Uh, in that, we mentioned uh, uh, one of our partners called Brain FM. They have a meditation app that actually guides you through meditation. Just go to brain.fm forward slash mind pump. You'll get 20% off. This episode is brought to you by Paleo Valley. Um, Paleo Valley makes incredible beef sticks. So these are amazing snacks, great macros. The beef sticks are 100% grass fed and grass finished. There's a lot of products out there that are grass fed, but what they don't tell you is that they feed them corn and wheat and grain at the end. So what you're getting really isn't a grass fed product. These are grass fed and finished all the way through. All these beef sticks are sourced from small domestic farms in the United States. They use real organic spices to flavor the sticks versus conventional spices, which are sprayed with pesticides or natural flavors, which are often made with GMO corn. The sticks are fermented, which creates a, which is naturally occurring probiotics. So these are actually good for your gut health. And of course, the most important thing, they taste amazing. Here's the thing you should know about grass-fed and finished beef. It's higher in omega-3 fatty acids, tends to be higher in vitamins and minerals, glutathione, CLA. This is a fatty acid that some athletes actually take to help them burn body fat. And of course, the protein is very bioavailable. It's keto-friendly. And look, it's a great snack. If you're trapped at home and you want to grab a bag of chips, why not grab a grass-fed beef stick from Paleo Valley? And of course, because you're listening to Mind Pump, we have a hookup for you. So here's what you do. Go to paleovalley.com. That's P-A-L-E-O valley.com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mindpump15. That's the number 15, no space, at checkout and get a full 15% off. Also, uh, we were not planning on doing this until later this year. We had it slated for later this year, but due to the current circumstances, a lot of you want to be working out at home. So we took our Maps Anywhere program. This is a program designed to get you incredible fitness, to get you to burn body fat, build muscle, to feel amazing without any equipment. All you need is your body and some bands. That's it. You need nothing else. This program does it all. We're going to cut it in half, cut the price in half, 50% off. Again, we weren't even planning on doing this. We have another program on sale for the whole month, but a lot of you are stuck at home or just you don't want to go to the gym because that's smart right now. Maps Anywhere, amazing fitness. It's 50% off. You get everything you need, workout demos, uh, exercise blueprints. Of course, it's all virtual, so there's nobody training you in person and touching you with all their germs and all that stuff. You just log in online, follow the program. It's half off. Here's what you do to get the 50% off. Go to mapswhite.com. That's M-A-P-S-W-H-I-T-E.com and use the code WHITE50. That's W-H-I-T-E-5-0, no space, for the discount. Killed it. Oh, yeah, no. I hear nothing. Well, let me see. Sal, you have it in the right holes? Have you heard? This yeah, this is the right. I, that was my mistake last time. Let me switch that. You guys I, switch, uh, switch them around? I get excited. I put it in the wrong hole. Hi, my name is Sal. I'm new to podcasting. How's that, Sal? Oh. oh, oh there it is. Righty then. Let's go. Yeah. 
<laughs> wow. It's you like, know what? It's wow. like TRX. Fuck everybody yeah. being all nagged out. Dude, I'm in a good mood. You yeah. Know you know, dude, I was I was thinking about this a lot yesterday and this morning, and um, I was thinking, you know, because we have a, a podcast, right, that reaches a lot of people. I'm like, what is our, what can we do during this situation? How can we help people? Yeah. And I thought, you know, right now what you hear a lot of is, you know, fear and what you need to do to prepare. Hmm, a bunch of negative Nancys. Yeah, like scared and, you know, and I get that. That's important. It's all important stuff. Sure. You know, uh, I totally it, understand it's that. It's real but, stuff going on. But I thought, okay, we're, we're a fitness and health uh, company. And what is our role? What is our role in the fitness space? And I thought to myself, way back when we first started Mind Pump, when we first started Mind Pump in the first place, like our, our purpose for starting Mind Pump in the first place was to effectively communicate fitness and health to the masses. And the way to do that effectively, to, the way to really do that uh, is to be hopeful, positive, to not get to, to prevent people from hating their bodies, to help people to love their bodies. And we learned this through training clients for two decades. Mm -hmm. You know, when, when, uh, when you first become a trainer, one of the things you do, and this is just this, no fault of your own, this is just what you think is effective, is you scare people. You tell people, if you don't lose this weight, you're gonna, you know, not going to be healthy. You're going to have a heart attack. Eating these foods is going to kill you. And you start to learn if you really want to help people and pay attention. And if you're uh, humble enough to question your true effectiveness, you start to realize that that's not effective. That's, that, that's how the fitness space has been communicating forever. It's been scaring people, making people feel ugly, mm -hmm. making people feel insecure. You're fat, you're ugly, you're skinny. You know, uh, you're know, you not doing enough. You're not doing enough. And what you end up learning through years and years of training clients, that doesn't work long term. You can only hate yourself so much. You can only be motivated by fear so much. And so then you start to change your message a little bit and it becomes a message of self-love rather than self-hate, taking care of yourself rather than uh, hating yourself. And so as I was thinking about that, I thought, you know what? Um, our job is, is, is the job we've always had, guys. This is the thing we've always learned as trainers is to be proactive and positive to get people to feel good through real honest information, not fluff. You know, we're not we're not into the fake hype and motivation. In fact, we hate those guys because mm -hmm. that's also baloney. You know, um, real to be real, but to also be you know uh, truly, truly um, effective. Well, uh, do you feel like there's a lot of fear mongering going around right now, like with this the the coronavirus? Right dude, now? I'll tell you what, bro. Um, Absolutely, I think so. And I'm not, I'm not. Um, Dismissing it. Yeah, I'm not dismissing it. I, I get that it plays a role. And, and humans have a, we have what's called a negativity bias that we evolved with, where if you hear good news mm -hmm. or you hear bad news, you're more likely to pay attention to the bad news. You're going to remember it longer and it's going to impact you much more. And this makes sense when we evolved as hunter gatherers in a small community. So you're, you're traveling with a band of 15 people, 30 people max, and you hear from one of the warriors. You know, hey, there's a there's a another clan coming this way. Like you got to pay attention to the chat th that shit, and it's way more important than, you know, the other news you heard that morning that there's some awesome berries growing, you know, a mile away. That makes sense, but it, it can also be, uh, you know, it can also uh, cause problems. And our news cycle is uh, it's it, it's run by consumers. You know, we dictate what the news you know networks focus on. Yeah, and so if they post an article that's you know, scary and negative. Like I just saw an article today in New York Times. You know, if you Google coronavirus, you know, um, how bad can this really get? How many people are going to die? Like, mm -hmm. and and those are all speculations. Um, and again, I don't think it's not important information, but you could tell that's what people are clicking on. Well, you know? I, I, I've been saying this since the beginning of all of this, that I'm more worried or concerned uh, about the economical repercussions that we're going to pay for from freaking out than the actual virus itself. And the, I think that's the part that is alarming to me is that what ends up happening, what we see, what do we see in grocery stores right now? It's like insane. Like people are, 
you know, buying out all the toilet paper. Like you yeah. couldn't wash your ass in a shower. Everybody immediately goes to, to like, scarcity. Yeah, yeah. Everyone is freaking out. And then you, what the next thing that happens to is people stop spending money because they don't know what's going to happen. And then everyone gets afraid. And that, that type of stuff affects our economy. And when you look at where the Fed was at, okay, we've continued to, we've been in a bull market for like the last four or five years plus right now. And it, it, with unprecedented numbers, it's been, the economy has been crushing. The stock market's been crushing. And we kept that going by continuing to reduce the rates as far and that's normally what the what we use to jumpstart the economy. So mm. when things start to take a dip, normally what ends up happening is to encourage people to go borrow money. The Fed reduces those yeah. rates and they keep going lower to keep but my concern is that we are at all time lows with interest rates, encouraging people to borrow money, and then we have something like this, and then everybody freaks out and gets scared, and then hoards there, and holds on. There's, to it. there's a, there's. It's important to be cautious. It's important to be re- objectively cautious, uh, mm-hmm. but it's also equally important to not let that uh, cause more problems for you, even internally. Staying at home and freaking out all day long. It's easy for me to say that, right? Uh, it's harder to to actually do. But I was thinking about all this, and and then I started to remember the last time that the country really got um, this afraid, the last time this country was really shook. Now, I'm old enough to clearly remember September 11th. It was a very scary time. It was, a, it was a, one of the first – we got attacked by terrorists, mm-hmm. uh, and we didn't really know what was going to happen. Are they going to bring – you know, a, a dirty nuclear bomb. I remember all these fears. Remember, right. are they going to sneak in a bomb or a, a nuke? Are they going to... Yeah. Uh, what other cities are next? Like, yeah, I was living at Chicago at the time and it's like, you're thinking about every building that you're walking into now. Like, you just have this in the back of your mind where this fear has just like consumed you. Yes. You just don't know, you know, what's in front of you anymore. Yes, and then I uh, remembered this quote from uh, Fred Rogers, who's, you know, was Mr. Rogers. And this this guy is just brilliant. A oh, great documentary if you don't know much about about this guy. He, he had a children's show on public television and he was just so effective at communicating to kids. But he, this is his quote. Um, he said, when I was a boy and I would see scary things in the news, my mother would say to me, look for the helpers. You will always find people who are helping. And then I remembered September 11th and how after people got scared, but people also banded and worked together like we had never seen before. I felt a sense of unity in my neighborhood in California, across the country, with uh, Americans, with other people um, that I had never you know, felt before. Um, then I remembered uh, a conversation I had with Bishop Barron. Um, and if you haven't listened to this, this the, our interview with him, it's a really good one. He's a, he's a Catholic bishop and you know, when we did the podcast, uh, especially me, I was uh, I used to be atheist and I was kind of questioning things. I thought, what a great person to ask lots of hard questions. And I asked him one of the most difficult questions, I think, and he actually admitted this is one of the more difficult questions he gets asked about, you know, is there a God? And I said to him, you know, if God really existed, why would he allow so much evil? Mm-hmm. And he said, um, first off, a lot of evil is done by men, but it also uh, opens up the opportunity for good and for grace. Um, you know, it's like when I talk about Superman, how he's not courageous because he went into a burning, you know, building. It's not going to hurt him. The person who had the the the, fe- the actual fear and could potentially die who went in, that's the courageous person. And so, life has always had shitty stuff happen. Always since the beginning of time. Horrible things have happened uh, to humanity, whether it's personal and local, you lost a family member, you yourself got sick, mental illness, or global pandemics, wars, terrible acts, and all these, this is going to, it's always going to happen. This is, gonna, this is how life is. It's just inevitable. Don't fight it. Of course, we can prepare to prevent things. We can learn from our mistakes. But uh, since the beginning of time till now, we haven't been able to solve every single hardship Stuff is going to happen. And so when that stuff happens, it's an incredible opportunity uh, for us to do good um, and for us to rise above. Um, and, you know, it's it's funny. Italy right now, right? They're at the center of the... I was just going to ask you that because right now, uh, you know, they're obviously ahead of us. Mm-hmm. Uh, what are we seeing? Because uh, originally, there's so much stuff coming out, first of all. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, I'm in a thread with a couple of my buddies, and the irony is like, depending on what uh, political side you're on, 
it tends to be the information you're getting, whether you're more optimistic or pessimistic, you know, whether you're trying to bash our leadership. And so therefore you're putting out all this, oh my God, this mm. is so bad. And this is all Trump's fault, yada, yada. Or the opposite side, you're trying to protect him and say, oh no, we, we, this would have happened had he not done this. Yeah. Uh, and then we're seeing a lot of things that have happened over in Italy. And so rumors are that we we are 10 to 14 days behind what's going on in Italy. And now they have pretty much shut almost everything down over there, right? Yeah, so um, the measures that they've taken um, are uh, that we're taking here now um, will probably drastically reduce amount of infections and all that stuff. But I don't want to necessarily talk about you know, how hard it's going to be and all that kind of stuff. What I want to point out is the human spirit uh, during this process. Now, if you look at Italy, Italy is of all the, of the entire free world, right? Um, they've actually suffered the most. They've had the, the most infections and deaths compared to any other free country, entire country on quarantine. I have family in Italy. I have uh, my dad's family's all there. Part of my mom's family's there. I have family in Northern Italy where this outbreak started and um, and then so we 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 talk to them. I see news articles, and uh, here's what's happening. Um, the, if you all around these towns, and this is what I love about the human spirit, we can only be scared, and we can only be pushed so far until good starts to come out. Mm -hmm. In Italy, you go around shops, restaurants, uh, you know, buildings, and you see these uh, drawings and paintings of sunshines and rainbows uh, that children made. Children are making these pictures and paintings and pasting them everywhere, and it's saying, Tutta bene, everything will be all right. You're seeing these all over the country of Italy. You know what else you're seeing over there? And this, it, it, it makes me almost emotional to talk about. And you can go on YouTube right now and Google and find this, and this isn't making the top of the news because it's good news, like I said before. But this is happening all over the country of Italy. A lot of the way the towns are designed in Italy is their, their, their buildings, and you live on a floor and they all have balconies. Okay. It's like the stereotypical, you know, town of Italy that you see where people on their balconies on stuff. And everybody has to stay inside. They can't leave their houses unless they have a good reason. So now Italy, Italians have been quarantined in the north for a little while and the rest of Italy for a little less, but enough time now where people are like, fuck man, I'm, I can't, I can't see my friends, families. I can FaceTime people. That's it. Do you know what they're doing? Mm. They're singing on their balconies together. Mm. Go on YouTube. You can find these videos. People are singing songs together in neighborhoods on their balconies, uh, popular Italian songs, songs that kids learned, you know, growing up, songs that are popular on the radio. People are out there and they're doing this and they're, it's, it's, it's incredible. It's incredible and uh, very, very touching. And again, it reminded me of, of September 11th and how people, especially in New York City, came together and worked together. You know, New York has that 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 uh, stereotype of, you know, people are rude, and they're bump into you and fuck you and whatever. After September 11th, you ask anybody who was there and they'll tell you that, you know, the the Muslim guy down the street from the Jewish guy was they were fucking working together being friends that that the the black and white dude uh were were helping each other, that men and women and everybody was just coming together and so uh you know, that 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 really motivated me to want to do this episode about Things you can do for yourself um, that help you stay fit, healthy, and well, especially well, because I think the mental toll that this is taking on people right now uh, is 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 can be pretty bad. Well, I, I love the attitude of already I, what I see in some of, some of our own community. I saw a post this morning from uh, one of our trainers. Now, gyms are some gyms are shutting down in classes, and so uh, a lot of trainers are wondering, oh, what do I do? And you know, we, we saw a post already this morning of a trainer who already owned Prime and Prime Pro and just hadn't taken the time to really dive in it and go through all of it. So, well, I'm, I'm quarantined to home now because my right. gym is closed down. So I'm going to bury myself uh, and learn everything you guys teach in Prime and Prime Pro. And we got a, a great thank you message about that and just going to up their game as a trainer. So learning to take something like this and, and look for the, the silver lining in it and find ways to totally. uh, to better yourself. Totally. So I, I'm excited to see that some of the people in our community are already starting to oh, do yeah, that. Yeah, right? I'm definitely starting to see that. Uh, I was out at the, uh, this park yesterday and I mean, it's, it's already happening where all the schools are getting shut down and, um, you know, people are kind of trying to work from home. And so uh, we just find ourselves all at the same time at this this field, and I'm talking to like all these neighbors I would have normally just kept to myself and driven past, and mm. you know never interacted with, and uh, you know just having that positive.
positive sort of uh, spirit that, that we're sharing between each other. And like it's, you know, it's it's one of those things where it helps you to slow down and appreciate life again for a minute. And that's something we're trying to focus more on, you know, that end of it versus, you know, that this is a storm right now. This mm-hmm. is a storm just like any other storm like it's a, it's a hurricanes come through and they decimate you know and and you know and, the, and there's there's real repercussions that are are going to be there but there's also that other side where it's like you know you're you're one piece, you know, in the whole in the whole spectrum, and, and, and to be able to connect to other people that are passes. the same, and it passes, and the storm passes. Well, right. and it's it's also understanding the thing the things that we're doing right now are precautions, so it doesn't spread and get crazy. Exactly. So uh, the part of the what's happening that is unfortunate is the the fear of of all this is is escalating the the sure. real actual fear of it, and it's like. Because we've never seen this, right? We've never seen. Oh my God, you can't fly anywhere now. Mm-hmm. Oh, this is good. NBA should. Well, that's because we're you're talking about places. That's why, like, I understood what happened with Arnold when uh, it just it made sense to me. You're talking about an area that's going to have a quarter million people under, and it's just smart. It's just smart to take mm-hmm. care of our, our our people and to not allow it to spread exponentially. We're going to cancel things like this. Right. It's not because we have to. We're going to die and everyone's right. freaking out. It's what, like it's just a smart maneuver. What was that you were telling me, Sal, about like St. Louis and other cities with the Spanish flu and how they? Oh like- yeah, yeah. There's a good example of of how because um, social isolation is is one of the most effective ways to prevent uh, this, the, the curve of infection from spiking so high. And there were two cities during the Spanish uh, flu that they used this comparison. One was St. Louis. I can't remember the other one. One of them canceled these public events, was uh, was ridiculed for doing so um, because, you know, people are like, oh, the, you know, you're hurting businesses and why don't we maintain, you know, keep doing what we're doing. One of the other cities, couldn't remember if it was St. Louis or the other one, said, screw it, we're going to continue with our big, uh, I don't remember what it was, what holiday it was, but parade. So there's a huge parade. You compare the two cities in terms of infections and deaths, and the one that had the parade was like 10 times higher. So social isolation is the most effective. And you, you we're seeing this in China. We're seeing this all over. It actually works. So um, it does work. But the, 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 the other repercussions of this is this. You're at home. You're not going anywhere. Uh, your 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 tendency is to continue to consume negative, uh, scary news. Mm-hmm. Um, and look, one of the number one places that are going to stop that people are going to stop going to, and that might get ordered to shut down, which probably will get ordered to shut down for time, are gyms. Mm-hmm. Gyms are public gatherings. People are sweating. You know, there's lots of germs, all that stuff. It's 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 a it's a, a big public gathering. They're going to be shut down, but that doesn't mean that you. Uh, can stop or should stop taking care of yourself. Like, what do I do? Do I sit at home, get scared all day long, reading the news, watching TV, uh, not take care of myself? Like, you know, th- that also isn't good for you. It's not It's not healthy for you. And then you may be one of those people that's just, you know, really motivated. Like, oh, crap, what do I do? I can't work out at the gym. So let's talk about at home. Let's start out with the out ho- at home workout tips because Working out at home actually gives you an opportunity to change your workout for a short period of time, mm-hmm. which actually is not a poor substitute. You know, it's funny. We have a, a program called Maps Anywhere, which is an at home or, you know, wherever you want workout program. It doesn't require equipment, just your body and bands. And some people think, oh, that's a substitution. If I can't make it to the gym, then that's a poor substitution. It's actually not. It's a great different way to work out. We've talked on the show so many times about novelty. And how changing things up gets your body to respond. Well, here's your opportunity. If you're married to the gym and it's the same workout, now you're not going because you can't. Now you're at home. What a great opportunity to focus on things you haven't focused on before. Well, this is also, so I've been getting lots of of messages from uh, trainers right now too that are are starting to also freak out because this is their main source of income is the training training clients one-on-one in person. And many clients... Uh, even if the gyms aren't canceled yet, clients are canceling just in fear of mm-hmm. being around that. And, uh, you know, I've told a lot of them, this is a great opportunity for you to try and coach virtually. And, you know, I, I've told a couple of trainers, I'm like, listen, use the Maps Anywhere program, use Maps Prime or Prime Pro, which are all things that can be done in like a living room and encourage clients to still keep their sessions one-on-one with you. It's beautiful nowadays with iPhones and Zoom. FaceTime them. Yes, FaceTime FaceTime your appointments Mm -hmm. and work them through one-on-one virtually. Totally. And even if you have to, this is a- a, People will appreciate it. 100%. Even if you have to pivot that to a a discounted rate to do that- you know, here is a great way to uh, to be able to accommodate these people that still want to train, still want to stay fit, but then are not able to go 
uh, inside the gym anymore, great time to pivot to something like this. Take them through a Maps Anywhere. Take them through a Prime or Prime. I mean, uh, this is another thing. So I, anytime we do these live events, I get opportunities to talk to a lot of private trainers. I give this as uh, something uh, that I tell everybody that is a, a coach that there's this huge opportunity right now for people to teach uh, mobility work. And, and the reason for that is there's an explosion of these F45s, Orange Theories, these high-impact, high-intensity type circuit-based classes that don't address mobility and corrective exercise very well. And instead of trying to compete with those brands, I've been telling trainers there's a huge opportunity to complement these brands. And maybe this is the jump start that you needed to, to take that advice into action. But I would 100% take... Uh, the joint stuff that we have in Maps Prime Pro, I would take those movements, I would pick five to seven of them, and I would teach my clients virtually these things to do. Oh, I, so, I remember years ago, I, I uh, you know, I used to grand open gyms for for Twenty Four Fitness. There were two clubs that I grand open, and one of them, um, we opened up the cardio area, the pool first, and the rest of the gym, the free weights and machines and all that stuff, we hadn't opened yet. So it was just cardio and swimming pool. And I had trainers who were ready to start and everybody's freaking out. What do I do? I got no equipment. I said, body weight and band work. Let's have fun. Let's get creative. You could do great workouts. You want to know what's funny? We had some of our best months in sales during those times because people loved it. They loved the variety. They loved the different exercises. Mm -hmm. People also got great results. So if you're listening right now and you can't go to the gym you can still do some amazing workouts at home, and they may actually be more important today than they were before because of the, the the stress and anxiety around what's going on right now. It helps you maintain mental sanity. When they do studies it's on therapy, man. Oh, it is. And when they do studies on on prisoners, prisoners who are active, far far uh, better mental health because of the activity, and they're locked in yeah. a cage, and their freedom has been taken from them. Yeah. What do you have power? What do you have control over right now? It's, it's like being able to uh, maintain your own health by, you know, still applying healthy practices. And this is something that, you know, people should really then now use this as an opportunity to really focus in on your health, mm. assess yourself. So here, so here's some takeaways, right? For, for at home workouts, frequency is king with body weight and band workouts. So where if, when you're lifting with heavy weight, lots of tension, you know, and you're doing your heavy exercises, you're going to want to take you know, time off in between, let the muscles recover, whatever. When you're working out at home, the tension isn't as high. You can actually work out every single day. Now, that's also going to benefit your mental state anyway mm -hmm. because you're going to want to be active every single day. Um, I work out like this oftentimes when I'm on vacation, when I don't have access to a gym. I'll do a 30 to 40-minute full body, body weight, or band type workout. And when I come back, I actually have better performance in the gym. So that's tip number one. Body weight exercises, do them every single day. Give yourself a 30 to 45 minute workout and just do it every single day. If you're really advanced and you're bored as hell, you can do two of those a day. No joke. You can do 30 minutes in the morning, 30 minutes at night, and watch what happens to your body's uh, progress. Um, this is also a great opportunity to incorporate high intensity interval training uh, type circuits. Mm -hmm. Now, these circuits, of course, if you rely on them and that's all you ever do forever, we talk about that on the show, just like doing anything forever, probably not good. But if you're at home for a month or two months or three months, what a great way to build up your stamina, your endurance, and your performance by doing these circuit based body weight type workouts, you know, throughout the week. Yeah. And, and imagine too, if you're somebody like us that are indoors all day long and like your job requires you to be sitting quite frequently, like this is a great opportunity depending on the weather or whatnot. You could be outside, you could be getting the sun. Like I take my kettlebells out there. I'll do a nice circuit with the kettlebells. Um, and it's a completely different type of a stimulus that your body is just going to thrive in. So it's, it's just like, you got to find that opportunity and really like go in that direction. What can I do to benefit mm. myself? Right My favorite body weight exercises are push ups and all of the push up variations. So, you have your traditional push ups. You could change the tempo with your push ups so that you pause at the bottom, like right when you hover above the floor. You can also change your hand positioning to from close to medium to wide. Mm -hmm. You could also do what are called dive bomber push ups, where you go chest first and then kind of scrape the floor with your belly chest up and then get back into and all of this is in maps anyway this is all it's there you yeah. could do jumping push-ups there's so many variety of push-ups that are phenomenal for tricep shoulders and chest if you have bands 
rows till the, the cows come home. All kinds of different rows. One arm rows, rotating rows, both arm rows. You could do pull-ups if you have a pull-up station, like a chin-up chin bar, or if you have a two-by-four you can grab onto. That's how I used to do push-ups as a kid. I'd hang pull-ups. off of the edge of the, uh, yeah, pull up. excuse me. I'd hang off the edge of my, my parents, you know, uh, overhang or whatever. Those are great for back. And then l- lower body, lunges, side lunges, squats, jump squats, jump lunges, single leg toe touches, so many different yeah, exercises. Unilateral training. I mean, a lot of times too, like this is where we talk every now and then of like a, having a period of just going into unilateral training, right? right? Like because of the benefits of that, of being able to now stabilize all my joints again, which then, you know, transfers back when I get into the gym where I can really get after it because I'm even more supported. So, you know, there's that benefit to it as well. Yeah. And and then what Adam was talking about um, was mobility work. Mobility work, if you are like most people, including me, uh, mobility work is probably, uh, you know, it's probably not a, always a priority, right? It's, it's not as exciting as deadlifting a ton of weight, mm-hmm. not as fun as getting a good pump, you know, for a lot of people. Um, but here's your opportunity. And mobility work uh, requires no equipment. It requires tension, intrinsic tension and uh, intention. Um, and you know, let, okay, fine. Let's look, let's say worst case scenario, you're, you're hold up for a couple months. Don't go to the gym for two months, but you place a heavy focus on mobility. That might be exactly what your body needed. Right. And then you go to the gym and then you get under the bar when everything's clear. Man, everything's moving so easily. Yeah, you're getting deeper. Yeah. Your, your form is better. And we know what that turns into better gains. Yep. Uh, let's talk about nutrition. That's the other part, um, that, you know, we, we, we have some expertise on, um, I, you know, there's there's a few different ways you can approach nutrition for health. There's the obvious one, which is you know good nutrition, right? Good macros, proteins, fats, and carbs. You know foods that are good for you physically. But there's also another side of food, which is comfort. It, it, it makes you feel good. You're connecting with the people around you. Um, I'm not here to tell you to avoid comfort foods completely and to become this super hyper regimented. Dieter, we never, t- we actually, we never promote that. I think what's important during a period of uh, like this, when you're at home, is to identify the true value of each, and then being honest about which one you really need. Do I really need to comfort myself with this comfort food, or should I be feeding my my physical body? And usually, I'm not going to lie. Usually, the answer is I need to take care of my physical body. Sometimes, though, a glass of wine and a cheeseburger. <laughs> Is uh, is just what you need. Well, what's your thoughts on um, on people that uh, up into this up into this point, maybe the last week or so, with uh, with all the Corona stuff, was on a you know calorie restricted diet to lose uh, weight or body fat? Um, what's your thoughts on uh, that right now? With talking about what are some of the things that you can do to protect yourself or to stay healthy in this time? Would you recommend uh, living more in a maintenance to surplus? calorie intake uh, instead of being in a a deficit where you're probably stressing the body more than you need to. I think if you are, um, based off the studies that I've seen, if you are exposed to someone who's sick or you're sick yourself, you want to eat adequately. You don't want to cut calories or fast. Um, You want to just eat adequately, worry about hydration. If nobody's sick and you're at home and you're not exposed to anybody that's sick, then you can do whatever you want. You want to diet, you want to get cut, you want to bulk, you know, with your body weight workouts, totally fine. I just wouldn't push any specific goal if you're around sick people or if you're sick yourself. Well, I, that's right. I feel like if, if there was ever a time to to live in a calorie maintenance surplus, if there was ever a time to work within, if there was ever a time to lay off the hard, intense type of training and work more mobility and just take care of the body, to because really... It, it's really tough when all the information coming in from out the outside is this, uh, you know, fearing, making everybody scared and, and afraid and trying to stress you out because the, that in itself could be really detrimental to your health. That's is, a stress. Mm-hmm. Is if you are, if you are allowing all these things to freak you out, you're more vulnerable and susceptible to getting sick just because of that. So the the opportunity right now for you to really focus within, to focus on being positive, to Maybe work more mobility, more meditation type stuff, 
feed your body adequately, adequately, make sure you're getting balanced diet in right now. I would think of of all the times, this is probably one of the most important times for you to I do I totally that. agree. I, I was thinking that the whole time, like, because there's going to be a lot of people that want to maintain this level of intensity and like this push that they were on such a good momentum ride with. But, uh, you know, through these types of things, you're already being bombarded with uh, all this information that is stressing you out and is a culmination of stress that may be higher than you realize, like that you're just walking around around with naturally. So, uh, to, to then kind of take it, you know, maybe turn it down a notch and, and, and again, work on all these other things we're kind of trying to bring up in terms of, you know, like really benefiting your body and, and looking at more from a health perspective in terms of like looking at from a performance, uh, you know, advancement right now, I think would be a good shift for you. Yeah. I mean, uh, it depends on, on the mindset too. Um, Maybe you're uh, like me, like I can focus on things and my mind can run rampant. And sometimes a great distraction that actually forces me to be present Just isn't focusing on something else or an intense workout, right. you know? So if an intense workout may be what you need, mm, yeah. which is okay. There's there's nothing wrong with that. You just have to be mindful of how I think that's the real I think that's the real answer, yeah. right? The real answer is that you you have to evaluate and assess uh, yourself and how you react to it. If you're somebody right. who tends to overreact and allow all these other things to freak you out, stress you out more, the last thing you probably need is an over intense workout. Right now, if you're somebody who has the ability to kind of shut off all the the white noise mm -hmm. and turn and, it in a positive direction, right, and turn yeah. it in a positive direction and get after a workout and sure. you know, block out everything and, and internally focus on what you need to be doing, then by all means Dude, get after I, it. I, look, I tell you, I'll tell you guys a story. You know, uh, I've told this on the in the, uh, in the past and on the podcast, but I years ago, um, I I had someone very close to me get diagnosed with terminal cancer and I watched them deteriorate and then finally die. And I was very, very close to this person. They were a very important person in my life. And among other things, exercise kept me healthy and sane and it allowed me to be strong enough to support them and the people around us during that period of time. And the way I used the workout was literally what you said, uh, Adam. I It was my way of being present. It was when I could kind of not think of those things and uh, you know, take care of myself enough so that I could take care of others. That's the wonderful thing about exercise is you can use it like a tool. It's a, it's a multifaceted, it's like a Swiss army knife and it, except it's, it's effective at so many different things. Um, so use it that way, which brings me to another one. You, you kind of, you know, you guys have been alluding to stress management. This is a very important time. You know, like I'll give you an example. If you're a high level athlete, and you are pushing your body to the absolute limit, recovery and recovery protocols and sleep and massage and sauna and steam and cold bath, way more important than it is for the average person who just goes to the gym a couple days a week, right? Way more important. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're in a, uh, a very stressful time. We're getting bad news. We may be limited to what we can do in terms of travel, our normal you know, avenues of leisure, are cut off. You know, you're not going out to eat as much. You're probably not seeing as many people. We're social animals, so that can kind of hurt us. You're not going to the movies. You're not going to gyms or whatever. So because it's a stressful time, just like the athlete who's pushing their body to the limit, place more focus on the opposite end of that, which is to manage stress. And there are things that are proven that help a lot with that. Now, managing stress is not just a I'm going to sit here and not think of stuff. You have to be active, just like the athlete whose recovery is important. They have to actively seek out good massage. They have to actively seek out, you know, recovery-based nutrition and and techniques to help them sleep and massage therapists. You have to actively work on managing your stress. And there are things that are proven, scientifically proven, to have a profound effect on your body and brain's ability to manage stress. One of them is meditation. Now, real meditation is hard work, okay? So if you've never meditated before, two minutes of dedicated meditation is going to be very, very difficult. And really, the, there's many different ways to meditate, but the idea behind meditation is to be completely present. Okay? You know there's, you know, why you're talking about this, and we don't ever really share this, but uh, there is a lot of people that struggle with meditation, like I know you did mm -hmm. with sitting still because you you get antsy sitting still in a meeting. Uh, if you are, this is what another thing that I love about Brain FM is Brain FM has a guided meditation. Yes. Portion. 
So it's like a trainer for it. Yeah, no, it's literally. You walk. almost forget it's there, but it's so effective. No, very, very effective. So if you are somebody who who needs that, th- there are apps like that, like Brain FM, which we, you know, we use it for a lot of different reasons. That's another reason uh, that you could use that app. Yep. That and I love. one of the reasons why med- you know people there's a it's so popular to focus on your breath when you meditate is because by focusing on your breath, you can't focus on other things, and because you're breathing now, you end up focusing on the present, and it is a very effective way at uh, giving your body a break from all the stress. Um, Another very, very powerful method that's been proven in countless studies that have been done by by people all over the world for thousands of years, if you're religious, prayer. Prayer is a very effective way to manage stress. It's also an effective way to give meaning behind difficult times. You know, uh, psychologists talk about this all the time, that the people who get through the most difficult times are the ones that find meaning behind uh, what's going on. And prayer has been proven to do that. Um, So if you're religious or you're kind of religious, but don't pray. Prayer makes a huge difference uh, at helping people manage the stress. Trust me, I've looked at all the studies. Um, So whether, you know, if you are a religious person, um, I would say utilize that. Um, And then, of course, mindset. You know, uh, mindset is an active thing. It's not a, a passive thing. How do I change my mindset? Well, change all the things that affect your mind. So that may mean instead of checking uh, Google and the news every hour on updates, maybe allow yourself to check them once a day. I mean, it might be too difficult to not check it at all, right? You, you want to know what's going on. That's fine. But maybe just give yourself, be, have some structure. I'll check it at this time and this time. And for the rest of the day, I'm not going to check it at all. Because here's the funny thing, you know, I, I live here in, in, in San Jose, California, right? It's a big city. If I didn't have the news, if I didn't have Google, if I didn't have my phone, and I just walked around every day, here's what I would notice. Well, there's a little bit less traffic. Well, that's weird. They're out of toilet paper. I wouldn't notice anything else. There's really nothing else that I would see right in front of me that would cause me to kind of freak out. Now, that doesn't mean you don't, you shouldn't be aware, but if you're constantly reminding yourself uh, of, of what's going on and what are the updates and tell me what's happening around the world, your mindset is going to be uh, molded around that. And then your mindset is going to be a mindset of panic and fear constantly. So consider the things that are affecting your mind and modify them so that you have a, a, a better mindset. Another thing is sleep. Um, sleep is one of the most effective things you could do uh, to positively impact uh, your, your your stress levels. And so we've talked about this on the podcast before, um, set up a sleep routine. And I know some people, a lot of us, when we're a lot of things on our mind, it's very difficult to get a good night of rest. The, the prayer, meditation, mindset stuff, and the news, time that all around bedtime. So in other words, if I'm going to check the news, don't check it before you go to bed. That's Definitely a terrible, not. Time, terrible time to, to check it. Maybe check it earlier in the day. Um, if you're going to meditate and pray, um, do it an hour before bed, turn off your lights, you know, get dim, uh, speak softly, drink chamomile tea, wear blue blocker glasses or use candlelight, um, get your body prepared for sleep and that'll dramatically, uh, improve your ability to have deep and good sleep. Um, and then the final thing is entertainment. Uh, this is uh, funny. If you're, if you're in business, you probably already know this, but during times of, uh, you know, when people are scared and people are freaking out, there are certain things in the market that tend to do well. Um, and entertainment is one of them. Um, and typically things that are, are not so serious things that people wait, ways people can escape. This is a great time to read a, a, a fiction, you know, good time to read a book that has nothing to do with the real world. It's maybe fantasy or whatever that, you know, kind of, you get lost or watch comedies. That's another thing you do things that get you to laugh. Um, you know, play games with your family. Um, mind, mind pumps here for you, and my and mind pump. <laughs> That's and, right. I mean, and, we try, and yeah. we're going to be here for you. So, and with that, go to mindpumpfree.com and download all of our guides and resources. They're all totally free. You can also find the three of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin. You can find me at Mind Pump Sal and Adam at Mind Pump Adam.